New York City is known as the melting pot of the world. We all come from different cultures and become one, the New York culture. Add an S to the phrase and you have a smelting spot, which is exactly what Syria should be called. Wherever we come from, we all end up fighting. The Arab Spring movement started in Tunisia in January 2011 when a vegetable vendor Mohammed Bouzizi immolated himself in front of a municipal office. Oh, give me back my fruit cart! How will I earn my living? A movement that eventually toppled lifelong dictatorships in the Middle East. It started in Syria in March 2011 after a bunch of boys were caught spraying anti-Assad graffiti in the southern city of Dara and brutally beaten, resulting in the death of a 13-year-old. Angered by this, people took to the streets supported by rebel officers of the Syrian army. We are the free Syrian army and our goal is to oust Bashar al-Assad. Neighboring dictator Gaddafi had been chased down and killed like an animal by his own people not so long ago. My fate will be the same if I give in. My best chance is to crush the rebellion. Which he did brutally. But the rebellion spread and when the newly appointed Prime Minister of Syria Riyadh Hijab defected to Jordan in August of 2012, he predicted, The conditions are very bad. Assad's regime will fall at any moment. But destiny had other plans. President Obama had promised to pull out all US troops from Iraq by the end of December 2011. This vacuum in Iraq allowed Al-Qaeda to regroup who seeing the opportunity to broaden their empire entered the Syrian conflict in 2013. With Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi establishing his empire or as he puts it the Caliphate. Various Caliphates like the Umayyad Caliphate, the Abbasid, the Ottoman Empire, the Safid dynasty and the Mughal Empire once controlled much of Arabia, Africa, India and Europe 1000 years ago in a golden age for the Muslims. Then they see how pathetic they are today and try to recreate the past, not realizing that the world has changed, an illusion similar to the concept of Akhanda Bharat or one China that includes Taiwan, Tibet and Arunachal Pradesh. Anyway, let's get back to ISIS who first attacked anti-Assad rebels, weakening them and putting the almost beaten Assad right back on the chessboard. All this attracted thousands of mostly misguided Muslim youth and Islamists driven out of Afghanistan, Chechnya and Iraq who needed a new battle to fight. Now this became a difficult situation for the US who on one hand wanted Assad to go but on the other didn't want Assad to be replaced by ISIS. By 2015, ISIS quickly established a mini country in parts of Iraq and Syria earning a billion dollars from oil sales and donations. Assad once again began losing ground, but once again, destiny had other plans. He is my only friend in the Middle East. If he falls, America will dominate the region. So mid-2015, Russia openly entered the conflict by bombing the FSA, the same ones American and Turks had been arming so far. So effective was their campaign that Aleppo and Homs were bombed out of recognition. Meanwhile. Another geopolitical event had happened when in 2015, Iran signed the nuclear deal. See Bisbo's story. With sanctions lifted, Iran used their newly minted money in arming Assad. See Bisbo's story on Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Hezbollah. ISIS, who had taken the ancient city of Palmyra in 2015, destroyed a large collection of historical greto roman artifacts and structures were driven out the following year by the Iranian Quds Forts and Hezbollah, their Lebanese proxy. So effectively, we had two sworn enemies, Iran and the US, fighting against the ISIS, proving the old saying once again, an enemy's enemy is a friend. Meanwhile, in late 2017, the US-backed Syrian Kurds retook Al-Raqqa, ISIS's capital, forcing them to flee. Three, four hundred hardcore militants were given safe passage by US forces, even though they knew they will live to fight another day, but we are not ready for a battle to the last man. Now NATO allies USA and Turkey fought each other as Turkish troops targeted the same Kurds who had helped drive out ISIS, calling them terrorists. These Kurds spread across large parts of Turkey, Iraq and Iran 
of fighting for an independent homeland, thereby earning the wrath of Turkey. Assad then used chemical weapons in East Ghouta in early 2018, wiping out the remaining resistance to his regime. Despite USA's aerial campaign against Assad's chemical weapons facilities, the tables have turned decisively in Assad's favor. In 2014, the area controlled by ISIS looked like this. By 2018, they were almost completely driven out. At what cost? In just seven years of civil war, of a pre-war population of 220 lakhs, 4.5 lakh people have died, 60 lakhs were internally displaced, and 50 lakhs became refugees outside of Syria. That's half the population affected. United Nations had no words to protest the crimes against humanity in Syria, giving a blank statement. No words will do justice to the children killed, their mothers, their fathers and their loved ones. The only ray of hope is that ISIS has been defeated in Syria and their leader Baghdadi is on the run since last year. But ISIS is like a balloon. When it sees itself losing, it quickly disbands and finds some other trouble spot in the world to fight in. Bizbo's Limerick! Half of a civilization has been destroyed in five years. Fighting and killing has only led to tears. Can Syria rebuild and its cities refill? The fighting is not yet over and that's what one fears. All our videos are based on news and information published in leading international newspapers, magazines, professional journals and news channels, which we represent in a fun and interesting way. We pride ourselves on being a source of authentic news and information.